Awesome. Tara, thank you very Hello. much for joining me. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. <laughs> good, good. Where are you exactly? So I am in Richmond, Virginia. Um, so Markel headquarters here in Richmond, Virginia. And to be more specific, nice. I am in the Ventures Conference Room um, nice. here at our headquarters. <laughs> nice. And do you live in Richmond, Virginia? So I live north of the city um, okay. in a town called Hanover. Pretty quiet. Um, you know, not a lot going on in Hanover and a, an easy drive here to our headquarters um, out in Glen Allen. Uh, and is this a new experience post-COVID? Like, do you often go into the, the office now? Has it been? Yeah, so um, so before COVID, of course, we were here 100% of the time. And, um, yeah. you know, once COVID hit, I mean, it, it, it was almost like a thief in the night. It, it just sort of <laughs> abruptly kind of suddenly happened. Um, and uh, we were home for over a year. Recently, we started um, what we call a, a, a pilot over the summer to uh, sort of welcome folks back uh, slowly but surely. So we are officially right now still in our pilot, um, which is a three by 10, three days out of 10, um, some in-office time and um, some exposure to folks we hadn't seen in a while. Um, so, you know, right now uh, it's a Friday. I'm here in the office. It's pretty quiet. Um, as I assume most folks are, are, are taking advantage and working from home. <laughs> yeah, it's strange, isn't it? When you start to, to yeah. venture back, it um, is. you actually have to like learn to speak to people again face to face. Absolutely. There was a lot of leaders that, that behaved like so well over COVID. I remember a lot were, you know, I know you were saying to them, I know you're a parent. Uh, I know you've got kids at home. I know your partner's working. I don't expect you to work the same hours that you were doing before. Like, it's okay if, you know, you look after the kids in the morning and your husband, wife, partner, whatever, looks after them in the in the evening. So a lot of people were really understanding, which is, yeah. which is really nice to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I have several cases, I would say, on my team. Uh, where, you know, they had to figure it out. So, um, you know, our, our style here at Markel is flexibility um, and um, altering a course quickly. So we, we actually, we had to do a lot of that. But it's, I mean, I, I think it all goes back to um, hiring the right people, folks that you trust to get the job done, right? Um, and we trust yeah. and, and give them that flexibility and space to, to handle, um, you know, personal obligations. So. Yeah, my big thing, my big thing of the year is kindness. You know, if you if you focus on hiring kind people, you can't go too wrong. You know, people are nice to yeah. each other, nice to their customers, and understanding, right. and it's it's a really nice thing to do. So that's Absolutely. been my that's Absolutely. that's been my big focus. It's also, I think, been a really big test for inclusion. Right, you've got as you alluded to, people in. I mean, you don't know. Like, no one wants to share their home scenario. Right. Um, and and for companies to make sure that everyone feels included when a lot of the time you're not really sure what people are going through. Super tough. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, you know, when I think about it, um, I think one of the things that Markel used to get better insight was um, weekly well-being surveys. So, you know, I think it's to your point, it's, it's really important to, to have an understanding or, or do sort of a, a check or health check on on your folks. And um, I think leveraging that allowed us to make the appropriate changes and um, back to alter a course quickly. You know, there were some decisions that were made. And if we got feedback in that well-being survey um, that, that those decisions weren't the best for the associates, we altered the yeah. course. So. Um, yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. It's interesting. I I was um, when we had lockdown in England. It was April. I was, I could have sw I was swearing to everyone that it would been finished by May. You know, it's never going to last more than two <laughs> three weeks. Never. You know, right. Absolutely <laughs> never. Suddenly May came around. I'm like, mm, okay, this might be going in a little bit longer. Um, because you know, you'll start for me anyway. Because running a running a firm, you just I don't know, my thought process evolved. It was only going to be a few weeks and suddenly it's a few months and suddenly you could see and hear people like struggling with being at home and how to 
operate at home. Mm. How, how did you find it? Because it sounds like you were the same, same as me. You were in the office five days and suddenly yeah. you're not at all for a year. Yeah. I mean, did it take you a while? Or? It, it, it did. It took some adjusting. Um, I tell you, I, um, I don't have sort of a standalone office at home. Um, so I had to get creative and um, my wife doesn't either. So two of us working from home, that was the first task to figure out, <laughs> hey, where are we going to where are we going to set up um, yeah. and where will we find some quiet time for our our one year old at the time? Um, but, yeah, it, it did take some adjusting um, prior to COVID or the pandemic. I was not a big fan personally of working from home. Um, I like the the collaboration in the office, you know, it was my norm, you got everything you need there, yeah. you, you know, your phone is plugged up. Um, but but I found uh, through this transition that I actually like working from home. Uh, it's not bad. Um, but you know, if I were to pick sort of best case, it'd be hybrid, just as we are now. You've got, you know, FaceTime, and then uh, you have more quiet time, you know, within your four yeah. walls. So it was an adjustment, but, um, you know, um, looking back, I, I can't imagine, you know, a full five days in the office without the, the flexibility to have some hidden really? downtime at home. <laughs> Interesting. So you'll never, you don't, you can never see yourself going back to like commuting five days. Yeah, it would feel odd. I would I tell yeah, you, it would feel um, odd. As I, at this point, yeah, I've adjusted my calendar to, have more what we call one-on-one -on -one chats while we're in the office and um, yeah, maybe more project-based meetings when when home that don't require you know the the one-on-one -on -one, uh, collaboration so um, you know I, I'd hate to say never because things could change but I, I definitely like the hybrid I don't think it's going to go back to how it was before yeah. I mean it's interesting for, for you there my my, my uh, perspective is uh, is London and it's very similar if i i'm in ac3 now which is like the heart of the london insurance market and got lloyd's there and stuff and there's i mean it's friday today and there's no one on the streets like no one and and before covid i don't know if you've you've been to london and stuff it was if you stood still you'd get knocked over it was so busy yeah <laughs> um so it's going to be interesting i think it's people there's been 18 months or so now and, and you get used to it, you know, it's, you've, you found your feet, you get into your rhythm a bit. And yeah, if you live you know, a decent commute away from the office, I guess it's, it's quite tough to think about going back in five days. Yeah, you know? yeah, absolutely. So I think on the inclusivity vibe, it's thinking about how can we make it work for everyone? Cause it's so easy, you, know, you speak to people and like, oh, I really like working at home. I'm going to work at home and then, and then I, I speak to them a bit more and, and I find out they're leading you know a large team and I and then you start to think well look I mean actually your team members will want to see you you know they want to hear you listen learn you know certainly the younger younger ones who haven't learned how to work yet and are still finding their feet so hopefully we find this balance of you know like personal yeah I like working at home also okay i'm servicing my team as my yeah. kind of job as a leader and right. okay i want to get in yeah you know i think that, that that's a really good point and i when i think about it i can appreciate the 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 path or the route that we took here at markel um, by implementing the pilot over the summer and um mm -hmm. you know just sort of having discussions about key learnings uh, during the pilot before implementing something more permanent. So yeah, agreed. And, you know, I think pi uh, the, the hybrid model is the way of the future. Uh, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I remember having discussions about that or on similar topics before, um, you know, we really got deep into working from home. And I think a lot of folks were saying, if we come out of this the way we went in, we've lost. So yes. um, um, I'm hopeful yeah. to your point that um, we don't go back and that we continue to apply the, the learnings from the pandemic in future I hope so. years. Yeah. I got asked the other yeah. day whether I thought work from home was the great leveler for D&I. Tough question, hey? 
And like, how do you answer? How do you, how do you answer? <laughs> so, um, so there's two bit, two bits to it. On the on the one side, you feel like yeah, it could be right. Like a lot of a lot of um, mums, dads as well. You know, who want to be with their kids, but want to want to do well at, uh, uh, in their careers as well. It will enable them to construct a, a life where you can drop your kids at school, you can work, and your employers like. Do you know what Tara? You, you, you're an adult. You pick when and where you work, you know. And so that that will give people the opportunity that they might not have had otherwise. So I quite like that, you know. Yeah. I think I think that's really cool. The yeah. other thing though is there's a big div- digital divide, isn't there, in many countries? Like those that can afford to have good internet, that can afford to have technology and stuff and if you can't afford it, you might fall through the gap a bit. Like you might not even be able to even apply for a job like that. I mean, you can't do the video interviews. And so yeah. I think there's a lot, a lot to work through. <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, you make a great point about the digital divide. Um, and I, you know, bringing this back to the DNI space, um, one of the most important things I think. As, as folks continue to lean in and learn more is recognizing privilege. And um, I think one of the things that we didn't have a full understanding or appreciation for um, was the privilege around digital connection, Wi-Fi, technology. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I think continuing to learn and continuing to educate ourselves um, is gonna be important, uh, you know, so that we don't continue to divide you know, based on background, based on socioeconomic status, et cetera. We do a, a 2 p.m. call uh, with my team every day, half an hour, unstructured, just a general chat, um, COVID free. So we'd come on the call and we'd be like, hey, what's going on? How are you doing? Um, and just like stuff, you know, what you're watching on Netflix, um, you know, like what's going on? What have you done? Go for a walk today or coffee? What kind of coffee are you drinking? You know, just like kind of random stuff. And and everyone really appreciated it. And then I'd call everyone. Um, every morning I'd call everyone just for five minutes to be like, hey, how are you doing? What's going on? Um, and that's it. And that's what I did like the whole the whole way through. And I'm still doing it now, actually. And, and my company, um, just because you've shared what your company is doing, um, we're we're actually mostly now we've gone um, fully remote almost like almost fully remote. I have people all over the world, US and Europe, and pre COVID, you've kind of really had to be in London. Like when I was hiring people, it would pretty much be in London. We had our first hire in New York, and that was the plan. Like you know, we're hiring in New York, and then everything changed and and now we have people all over Europe and one of my colleagues wanted to move to Berlin I'm like great no problem uh, we're hiring some more I, I mean, literally I mean when we're hiring for ourselves now I don't mind where they're based uh, as long as they are kind and considerate and a team player and a few of the other things that we might look for for different roles that we hire for ourselves and it's been super cool that the talent pool's yeah. wider I've got Absolutely. more choice. It's more diverse. Yeah. All of that stuff, right? If you're sourcing from the whole planet, um, so to speak, um, you're going to get a really big selection of people. So um, that's been really interesting. It's com- like complete transformation. Um, yeah, it's been an interesting one. Yeah. I'm uh, I'm still going into the office because I like it, but I've uh, I've yeah. said to everyone they can choose how they want to. Yeah. Operate. That that's wonderful, and you know, I think it's the way of the future, Lewis. You know, I I would say our position has also changed. Um, although we're a global company, um, in my area within operations, we were uh, I would say prior to the pandemic, looking to hire roles locally, and um, to your point, you know, a, a greater talent pool and the ability to manage, um, you know, outside of the office gives us that greater flexibility to bring in um, top talent. So we've yeah. actually got folks that are, um, that we've recently hired outside of the Richmond area. And, you know, I think everything is working well. 
back to my original point, if you hire the right people, um, yeah. you, you trust that they're, they're getting work done and, you know, um, you know, they're good partners. So that, that's yeah. where it ends. I want to ask you about, um, you know, a lot of people talk about bringing your authentic self to work. You know, it's such a talked about thing. And I, I was just interesting, you know, being in the UK and watching, you know, the US elections and, and all of the, it just felt, um, I mean, this is just from coming from London, reading my phone. So I don't know if it's really the case, but it felt quite divisive, you know, a very polarised moment in time in the US. It was it was quite interesting thinking, you know, like, do people mean bring their authentic self to work? Or do they mean bring your authentic self to work as you, as long as you believe what I believe? Because <laughs> <That laughs> it's... Is... it's... <laughs> What, what did you experience? Because it must have been quite hard for people that, you know, if they were talking about politics and if they knew what people were voting and it was different to whatever they were voting for, it's like, it must be hard to actually like work effectively in a team with someone that you know has opposing views. It's a, I just found it a really fascinating yeah. kind of case study to think through. Right. Yeah, that, that is fascinating. And um back to the the comment around do they truly mean it i i think when when we say bring your authentic self to work we mean it but i i question um whether folks truly understand um how difficult it could be for for people that um are i would i would say attached to minority groups that are not considered the majority I mean, it, it's tough, you know, when we talk about something as simple as taste in music, right? Um, and the majority group, it's usually pop, rock, maybe country, and uh, minority groups. So let's just say, for example, it's it's gospel. Um, <laughs> and you're saying bring your authentic self to work, and we're talking about taste in music. Um, how does that feel to someone that... Um, you know, doesn't have anyone across the table that they can relate to. So, you know, I, I think it goes back to, yeah, um, yeah I think it goes back to um, just continuing to educate ourselves, uh, educate ourselves, recognize that there are differences and those differences are great. I mean, I think that that's what makes us, uh, you know, a better world. Um, yeah. Having those differences right. and, and not making folks feel left out because, um, you aren't aware of um, their interests. I, I love that. That example of the music is, is great because it got me think. I'm really going to not pronounce her name right. There's an amazing Nigerian author, um, and I've just Googled her name, uh, Chima, Chimamanda uh, Adichie. I don't know if you've... She's written some remember. really great... Oh, she's ma amazing books, a Nigerian author. Uh, and I watched that she did a TED Talk recently. Um, so the one I'm referring to is probably a while ago, and it's about... It's about the story that you have in your head about people, right? And so when you mention gospel, I've got one story in my head about people that like gospel music. And I and I, you know, images of like people in church and religious yeah. and like happy clappy and stuff. It put a yeah. smile on my face actually. Um, but maybe that isn't the case, you know. So I think you know, her point and my point is that, you know, whether it's, you know, they like gospel music or they voted for a different party than you believe in or they're from a different country or religion or whatever, you know, you've got to appreciate this, there's different perspectives and different stories. Mm -hmm. You know, not everyone's the same as the story that you have in your head. Um, right. And so just being open to finding out what their story is rather than thinking, you know, because they happen yeah. to like gospel music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Um... I agree. It, it's, you know, there are many examples I can think of, but uh, actually a, a colleague of mine was telling me actually a, a story about um, discussing taste in music. And it made me think, wow, um, authentic self, truly bring your authentic self, but, but, but how does that make one feel? So. I mean, I, I, I listen to music in my headphones. I don't want anyone to hear what I'm listening to. They'll be like, what are you listening to? <laughs> 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 um, yeah, what are you listening to? What What are you listening to on your headphones, Lewis? Nowadays, so my my favorite music is hip hop and house music. I listen to okay. hip hop. Or I listen to house music. So, 
Great. I grew up listening Great. to like hip hop and stuff like that. And then, and then I, I really got into like dance music, a little bit okay. like a university. And then, so I flip, if I want to like remember my youth, I'll flick on the old <laughs> music that I used to listen to back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I've got now like, I've got like music that remem reminds me of different periods of my life. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I, I used to listen to that album when I was like twelve, and I listened to that album. Yeah. <laughs> Same. What about you? Same. Um, you know, it, 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 pretty eclectic taste. I mean, I could go from, um, you know, soft rock to R and B to hip hop. You know, I could do a, a John Mayer, I could do a John Legend, or I could do a Kanye West. So. <laughs> Um, I think it's it's across the board. <laughs> yeah. And he ran for president, didn't he, Kanye West? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think so. <laughs> um, I won't talk politics, but I don't think I was voting for Kanye West. <laughs> no, no, I don't think anyone was voting for Kanye West. Um, but, uh, no, it's interesting. Yeah, music. It's you know, something that, it's funny you mentioned music because it's, yeah, I don't know, it's something that I don't often, haven't really talked about with people at work. Um, but it's not very, but it's a funny topic because it's, others are quite divisive, you know, like it's, you, people find it really difficult to speak about something like politics without um, becoming like argumentative and angry and combative, you, you know, like it's really difficult to have a, just a relaxed debate <laughs> about politics with someone, you know, people find it almost impossible. Um, but music, though, it's great. Like everyone's kind of like, like it's not very emotive, you know, it's like, yeah, that's cool. You like a bit of that and some jazz yeah. and some blues and that's really cool. Um, yeah. yeah. Maybe we should be <laughs> doing more of that. <laughs> yeah. And you know, it's funny um, that we were talking about bringing your authentic self and inclusion. And I, I think of a couple of examples um, where we've, we've spoken about music and I, I quite frankly have felt left out. Um, you know, maybe someone's, you know, having a discussion with a couple of others around a concert they're attending, and there are many names that I've never heard of, um, and you just chuckle and, you know, nod. <laughs> nice. um, so we're we're on the topic of music, but you know, I could think about many cases where I've felt that way, um, you know, outside of, um, you know hip-hop versus rock or country. So I think it just kind of goes back to education and even on my part, right? Educating myself on other cultures and other genres, um, even though they may not blast through my speakers as I'm coming in in the morning. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, I remember like we uh, we have ka we have karaoke bars, you know, like, and you got the thing. I mean, I'm, I, know no I know nothing. I like I know very little words of a lot of the popular songs and stuff, and a lot of the time, um, you know, during my career, like you'd go for team events to the karaoke, and I wouldn't be the guy on the mic knowing all the words. I'd be like, "Lewis, come on, you must know this one." I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> I don't know it," um, but it just brings it brings us nicely full circle to, you know, the authenticity and stuff. Is like, you know, we're still in our homes. And and the zooms and the video and everything, I think is 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 kind of brought things a bit more like personal. You, you know, like I've, I've, you can see someone's fridge, what the, the magnets on their fridge, or the artwork in their house. Um, I think that's been really a really nice thing. You know, the barriers have come down. You know, a lot of the time you see the facade of the suit and the tie or the smart dress yeah. or whatever you wear at work. Suddenly it's like, oh, that's a really nice piece of art in the background. You know, what's the story yeah. behind that? And so, the, you know, there's some nice good aspects to it now. I like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Agreed. We've cool. opened our homes. <laughs> yes. What a lovely place to end. Thank you so much. Thank you.